hear that? Can you hear it? Hear the birds? It's a beautiful day. It's like 56. Humidity's kind of low. It's a gentle breeze. The birds are singing. Oh, it's so nice. Have the windmill palms hanging out. Getting some fresh air. Let me see the... You can't really see that from here. There we go. Look at it. Look at that. Isn't that cool? These things are gigantic. Here's my hand for a little size comparison there. And this one up here getting ready to open up. Can't tell if it's male or female yet. Need it to open up some more. So fun. So neat and interesting. Overall, it's just fun to have some plants outside. They've been out for a couple days. Going back in tonight, even though it's lovely right now. At some point, it's supposed to start raining. And then maybe we'll get a few inches of snow over the next few days. I don't really understand what's happening. We will see. Hey, Turbo, what you doing? Yeah, I hope we get some snow. That would be very, very exciting. Look at the sable miners. Do oh, hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Trying to enjoy the fresh air while it's here for a couple of days. You doing, baby Toby? You say hi, Tobes? Toby. Dogs have been enjoying some outdoor fun playtime, too. We have a little look at some of the plants. Not much to look at this time of year, right? But got the sable palms. Glad those are out here. Some evergreen interest that looks a little bit different. Doesn't look like the lows are going to be that bad, so I'm not covering anything up. But again, I don't know, because the forecast just keeps changing. Oh, is your friend out? All right. Neighbor's got a puppy. He's just a few months younger than Turbo. These two, they will spend forever just running back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And sometimes dude will hand a stick through the fence and they'll chew on it together. It's very cute. Ain't he cute? He's such a good boy. Such a good boy. I love that Turbo has a friend that lives next door. They play together almost every single day, which I think is kind of nice for Toby because Toby likes playing with Turbo, but sometimes he needs a break. He has plenty of fun watching the puppies play, don't you, Toby? Yes, you do. Good boy, Toby. As I was saying, don't know how cold it's supposed to get. I don't think it's going to get that cold. And the snow helps insulate anyway, so the palms should be fine. The scrub palms, sable miners, they'll be okay. And the needle palms. Hey, Punkin. How you doing, honey? He's so cute. She's bouncing off the walls this morning. It's like they always know when the weird weather's coming. Hey, honey. What you playing with right now? I right. also just remembered to have another package of plates coming in the mail at some point today, just in time. So it sounds like the roads are going to be pretty horrible here for a few days, so I'm glad that that's going to come through before the bad weather gets here. We do some cleaning up on this peperomia. Hey, babies! You come out? Let's go, Turbo, you better get back here. Ran to Home Depot. Hey, babies, you good boys. Ran to Home Depot and didn't fit. Yeah, I haven't taken the lights off the bushes yet. It's been like 10 degrees all of January. February's looking like it's going to be more mild. Anyways, I remembered that there's this hole that needs to be patched. And that needs to be done when it's above 50. Look at that. Isn't that terrible? So all that is going to need to be replaced. That framing, at least the two side pieces and the wind. That doesn't matter. I need to get the foam. It's a temporary fix, but it's better than nothing. I don't know what to do over there. I probably didn't buy enough. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You stand right in front of me. I don't like that. That's annoying. Keep moving. Uh, Toby, where'd you go? You know, Toby has always been so well behaved that sometimes he just does whatever he wants. He doesn't think he has to listen because he's never really gotten in trouble. I got that done just in time. Just started to rain. Go ahead and get these pulled back in. The heater's blasting right now because, well, it's not that cold. It's like I think it actually might be 62 degrees, but it's supposed to drop drastically and I have both the doors. Oh, nobody cares. All right, come on, palm trees. Okay, I know, got off to a chaotic start. This is the way things happen over here. I had a bunch of little things I wanted to get done before the weather moved in. I wanted to be able to go outside and show some of the stuff outside before it got really, really cold and the snow rolled in. So I did end up foaming in that window on the outside, went in there and got that nice and full and then did a couple other spots then came in here and did this section as well. Not perfect, but doesn't need to be because in the spring or summer the entire window's got to go and be reframed, so it's just uh, it's just there to help keep the draft out. I have noticed that this bottom shelf was pretty chilly compared to the others, so that should make a difference and if not then I'll put a piece of 
insulation board over there that'll block out some sunlight. But we got the grow lights here. And the plants pretty much always go straight up, so I don't know how much they're really getting from out there anyways. When I have a seed update, I know I didn't say what's going on in the vlog. I don't really have a plan. I'm gonna hang out, enjoy the snow, get some stuff done in here. Maybe work on some lighting and little things like that. Do some repots. Oh, look at that. That's exciting. Seedlings are popping up. Got one, two, three, four ish of the green globes and it looks like there are let's see there's one two kind of hard to see about four of the red star artichokes which isn't bad because it said the the package said those had really bad germination rates let me count the green globes one two three four five. okay so four of each not bad considering it's only been a week hasn't even been a week so this is actually going much faster than I expected. Usually these take quite a while. In fact, that I've seen more out of them than I'd rather the oregano. There's one tiny little green dot back there with the oregano. With those, oh, sorry, things got shaky there. I was a little bit concerned that maybe I had put too much of the vermiculite on top. Because if you remember when I planted these up, I accidentally had like a bit of a spill in the front and tried to redistribute that. But that's okay, I can always add more oregano seeds if I need to, but typically, the oregano would be coming up way before the artichokes. Those were, uh, I think it said 10 to 21 day, 7 to 21 day, maybe? I don't even remember it. Either way, they're up faster than the packet said. It's great. It's what we like to see. So I have some space down here for some things. I don't know if I'm going to start any more seeds just yet. Right now, I mostly just need to focus on doing some repots, scooting some plants around. And I got this new timer to do the lighting up here so I can get those going, get more light to the back side of things. I would mentioned during this in the last vlog. I'm pretty sure I did. Now, I started to film while I was at Home Depot. Well, I went to Lowe's and then I went to Home Depot because neither place had everything I needed, but it was very brief in and out. The music was kind of loud and I was wearing an N95. It's really, like, I don't think anybody would have been able to hear anything I was saying. You didn't miss much. Picked up a few succulents and one Dracaena. Now I gotta go dry the dogs off because they ran around and played in the rain and pick up later. I'm really excited for the snow. Try to not make a big deal out of it because I know I already kind of like really went overboard with that in a vlog a couple weeks ago. They're saying that we might get like anywhere from, depends on what you look at, but some of the apps say like three to five inches. One of them says two and a half inches and there are like a few, I think it was the European report uh, said, said like potentially up to 14 inches in some places. What? We get more than two inches I'll be over the moon. Just enough to cover the top of the grass. Just like a fine sheet. Anyways, that's a couple, well, a day away. We will see. Temperatures are going to start dropping. Hey, BB, are you ready? I know we've already been through this with Turbo's first snow, but he's never seen this much snow before. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It really, it probably be pretty anticlimactic. There you go. You can go putty. Oh, it's not even that much. Okay, inch and a half. Give it a few hours. And he's going <laughs> to... What, what you doing? Are you gonna go potty? You don't know what to do. <laughs> he has no idea what to do. You get it, Turbo. Good boy, get it. <laughs> What's happening? What was that? <laughs> you got your toy. It's frozen. You need to go potty, baby. Go on. You need to go potty. <laughs> didn't know how to stand. Why is he like this? <laughs> oh boy. Oh, snow is fun. Seriously though, you really need to go potty. It's been a long time. I'm not cleaning up a mess in the house. Really into the frozen toy thing. What is that? What is that? Another frozen toy? It's a big snow box. Good boy. <laughs> he's always very floppy because you know eight months old but this is it's up to a new level you can tell he's trying to make sure he doesn't slip and fall <laughs> turbo go potty hey go potty go to the grass go on go to the grass okay this is cute i don't have shoes on you really need to go potty come on go to the grass okay there he goes off to do his nope you're not gonna do it it's just okay there's the needle palms. People want an update. There they are. They're fine. Totally fine. We haven't dropped below zero. I don't worry about them until 
temperatures start to drop below zero. Got very close, but not quite that cold. I think this is the first winter where they haven't been protected. Oh no, they got wrapped up one time, so they've had some, pr some protection. All right, it's time to go inside. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, that was fun. Plants are here, finally. Showed up a little bit late, not a big deal. Feels fine in here. I already opened it to make sure I get the invoices and things out with addresses and you know, the stuff we want to keep private on the internet. You know, I think, actually, I'm going to uh, get a small tank out of my basement to put these in because I noticed last week when I unboxed those plants that like, it was kind of hard to tell what was going on inside those bags, so I'll just, I'm going to run downstairs and grab a fish tank, throw it up here on the desk, put, move the plate. You'll see. All right, so now here's just hoping that this very cheap flimsy desk can hold about three gallons of water without collapsing. I think it'll be okay. Should I put a, I should put something on the back there so that you can see through the, okay. Ran inside and grabbed some uh, extra wrapping paper, just a piece of scrap. And I'll stick that to the back here very quickly and sloppily just to make the plants easier to see. Not aiming for perfection here. Wow, that is some very hairy double-sided tape. That's gross. Five and a half gallon fish tank, little internal filter just to keep the water moving. And I did dechlorinate this and I added just a tiny drop of aquatic plant fertilizer. That's all this is. Nothing complicated. Excited about some more plants. Okay, that's it. There's not that much in here. I am going to bring out the plants that were in last week's video and drop them into this tank also to make them easier to see. And really, I just, I needed a storage spot to hold on to the plants that I have coming in while I wait to set up the tank that they're going to go in eventually someday. Technically, the tank that they're going in is set up. It just needs to do some cycling and waiting for some more things to come in the mail. Just a few here, not as many as last week. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and put these all together. I have three more of the Anubius. You know, I really seem to like the Anubius. And in last week's video, I did talk about how the majority of these plants are for terrariums. Some of them are for fish tanks. A couple different projects going on right now. Several different projects. This is just a decent sized clump of Anubius Nana Petite. It is, looks pretty good. Rubber banded together nicely. They're just loose clumps. The ones that I showed in last week's video were potted up. They look really nice. These are loose, so they'll be better for gluing onto driftwood and one on. I'll unpop the other ones. I just have to wonder, are they going to sink? I might have to put a weight on them. No, I think they're okay. <laughs> I think I might have to put a different pump in there though. This one's a little bit too strong. I might just set a rock in front of it, something to slow the flow down. None of the plants that are here are ones that like really strong, heavy flow. This is Hygrophilia. Come on. Muramar. There's the, I should show you the name. There's the name, if you were wondering. These are a taller plant, good for the background, generally pretty sturdy and easy to grow in a fish tank. It should be good as an emergent plant as well. It's going to be messy. Surprise, surprise, more Nubius. Nubius Nana, variegated. Love the variegated plants, right? Aquatic plants come variegated too. These look pretty good. Good sized clumps, nice color on them. And then the last one is the same thing, just a much larger, more established plant. That is really pretty. That is a beautiful leaf. All of these variegated Anubias are going to be going into terrarium. I might do some pruning and clipping on the rhizomes and save some for the fish tanks. They do look very nice in the water. <laughs> that background worked out really well. It fell right down. Okay. I went ahead and I brought out the plants that were in the video from last week. A rock in the corner behind the pump just to help baffle the float. That's a really old internal filter. There's no adjustment on the flow and I think that's the smallest pump I have so that will have to do. Gone ahead and added some plant weights to all that Anubias because they were just all floating around at the top. Not really spinning around but still it was more flow than I think they would prefer. So that's going to help 
keep them down at the bottom, keep them organized. Aren't they beautiful? Then I brought out the plants that I showed last week. There's the Crypt Wintii, the bronze variety. Foliage on that's going to get broader and more of a dark color when it gets more light. That's going to help a lot too. And once it's actually planted up, sit in the rock wool, which has plenty of nutrient in it, but still not going to be the same as when they are being grown emergent. Have all those Anubius Nana Petites right over here, all the loose ones, and then I have the potted ones directly behind them. Those were in last week's video. The back corner, this is the Crypt Spiralis, which is similar to this one, except has long, narrow foliage on it. That is probably going to be used as an aquatic plant, as in, I mean, I'm gonna keep it in a fish tank. So I have a tank that I'd like to use that in. And here's that Hygrophila, Hygrophila, however you wanna pronounce it, Hygrophila pinnatifida, pinnatifida. We know that from the somatophyllum, right? The philodendron by Pinnatifidum. Foliage is fun, serrated, nice sturdy plants. That should grow up and out of the water in the setup that I put it in, not in here. I mean, it might in here too, but not likely since I haven't rooted it into anything. But they'll come up and out of the water and have little flowers on them. That'll be really pretty. And back here is the Microsorum that I showed in last week's video. Microsorum being Java Fern, narrow leaf Java Fern, Java Fern, a nice narrow leaf. Microsorum, big group of plants. Right? We know that from the kangaroo paw fern, crocodile fern is another microsorum. Fun plants, really sturdy, and then of course that larger variegated Anubius. Oh, that is so pretty. Absolutely love that. Not wait to get working with these plants. These are just a holding container. Shouldn't just be for a few weeks, at least for the ones that are going to the terrarium. So ones that I'm using for my fish tanks might be a little bit longer. It may not look that pretty, but I've gone ahead and Throwing some cling wrap to the top of the tank there just because the lid that goes with this is black, so no white's going to get through. I'm actually going to be keeping this on my plant racks. You know, those over there behind that light. That's where this is going. Just for a couple of weeks, the plants should do well with the light that's over there. I might drop the water level down some. The majority of the plants that are in here don't need to be fully submerged, but this is, this is the best I can do. Because I don't really have a place inside where I want to put a tiny little tank for a few weeks. It's mostly that I don't have a decent enough light that I'd want to put on this. Even though the plants that are in here are not ones that require high intense lighting, still they're going to do better out here underneath those grow lights. It's nice and warm out here. Another reason that I wanted to make sure that it had something circulating the water in there, it's just a good idea in general to make sure the water's moving. And I want to make sure it was covered because even though I don't use harsh chemicals out here, I still like go around with the like the insecticidal soaps and neem and all the various things and for the few that will end up in my fish tanks be best make sure that no contamination ever gets in here. See so chlorinated tap water, tiny bit of fertilizer and this is good to go. I am really having to resist the urge to aquascape this. I have all the stuff. I have so many fish things. I've been keeping tanks my entire life. It would be so fun to set this up into escape but that's not what I got these plants for. Oh, just gonna have to wait. That's fine. Yep, that'll do. I lowered the light down in the front so that there would be some more light getting into there, into the water, to penetrate the water. There's some weird like banding going on. Cameras not into those LED lights. Doesn't matter, I don't need to be over there really explaining anything anyways. It is the next day at the forecast. Like, oh, oh. As much as I love and appreciate the snow, there are some things that can be a problem with it, like power outages, which we haven't had, but the amount, the accumulation report just keeps going up and up and up and up and up, and there were some power outages not too far away, so I was like, you know what, I, uh, I don't think it's smart to be turning this heater off to film, because that needs to be running at absolute full blast to keep this space as warm as possible if we should lose power want it to be toasty out here so it just buys more time before they can get the power restored. It, it has been quite chilly. I think I down like 13 last night. It's supposed to be like 9 degrees tonight, 17 right now. So I did turn it off just to like catch all up with what's going on, but, but it's going to have to go back on very soon. So this vlog probably going to be shorter than I thought it was going to be, than I had planned on. I do have some propane heaters, so if I were to lose power, I can set those up in here. That is, of course, a complete and total last resort, right? Oh, we got some, got some flowers popping out of the croton over there. Cause you know, fire, death, scary, would just rather not. Uh, and they're not really safe to use indoors. The ones I have, 
need to be in a ventilated area, which I have a spot in the attic that can open up for ventilation up there, but that's also gonna let like single digit air come plummeting down in here. I also have some power inverters that I can hook to the car batteries outside. I don't think any of them are strong enough to hook heaters to. I have those two for the fish tank. Oh, and my HOA doesn't allow generators. You can't have like big generators sitting outside. There's a certain type you can have that I think they cost like 20 or $30,000, something insane but not the standard gas powered ones. Those are not allowed. All right, so now everybody's caught up there. I'm also using my phone because I gotta go up on the ladder. I don't take the big camera up the ladder. Oh, too dangerous. It's kind of cumbersome to hold on to. And I just, it would be really bad if I were to drop it. That's a different kind of view. Look at that. Everything looks so nice from above. Not that it looks bad from below. It's just, it's a nice change. That's just Monstera looking good. This started popping out a new leaf two days ago and look at it already. Normally the new leaves on this thing take like a week to get moving out during the winter time when it's inside, but that's what it, that's like two and a half days. It was in there and it's boop, all the way out there. That's fun. So it's enjoying the heat. I'm, I'm up here in the sky right now because I need to change out this Wi-Fi plug, this timer that's up here which I talked about in last week's vlog that I just, I needed one that had two plugs on it so that I can plug in the, oh, there we go, doing some focusing. Because I have some more lights that aren't able to hook up to the other timer. Hopefully this will do the trick. Now I need to go away and get this set up with my app. There we go, success. Well, sort of, it turns out this light's broken, but I don't care, that light never really did much. I mostly just needed this one over there to be on. Glad that worked out. Coming on down here. One thing that was nice about being up there was it gives me, gives me, hmm, interesting way to fumble my words there. Uh, I was able to see if it was going to be drastically warmer up here as opposed to down low and wasn't a huge temperature difference, which is fantastic. I wasn't sure if this fan was going to be enough to help move the hot air down and keep the air moving around for things to be more even, so I made sure to hook up my, it's an exhaust fan that you use for like growing cannabis. I use it to move the air around so it's pointed up so it'll like blow the kind of like ricochet off there and push down below. I couldn't find a good angle to have it blowing down and that actually seemed to be working fairly well. That's the carbon filter right there if you're wondering with the pre-filter around. It helps remove odors and you know it's like I said it's for growing cannabis. Help cool the area and remove some stink which I don't really care so much about that part. We want it on there to keep the bugs away or keep the bugs out of the blade. And it is nifty if I have to use like neem or say I decide to use a seaweed fertilizer, something stinky out here, and I turn that on within like an hour, the smell's gone. It works really well. I have that hooked up to uh, this right here. It is very loud, as you can hear, very loud, but effective. Last week I was up on the ladder. I noticed it was really warm up there. That's why I've set this up. That seems to be doing a good job keeping the air moving around and helping to even things out. It's actually helped to even things out a lot because it was like the bottom row over here. One, because that window, the installation you saw was horrible, but it was much cooler over here and down low than it was up high, especially towards the middle over here. It was like 84 over here and 62 over there at some points. And I got those fans moving in. They pretty much evened it out. Okay, and I have, woo that's a greasy lens. How embarrassing. Oh, sorry. Oh, that didn't help. All right, I have another light. I want to get hung up over here. Fan kicked back on. So I'm going to let that run and uh, let the dogs out. You can have a look at the snow. Hey, you, yeah, you like going outdoors. You've been having fun in the snow. There you go. Go on. There's <laughs> a lot more snow out there than there was in the prior clip or yesterday, I should say. Look at that. Oh, he's actually going. He's been wanting out just to run around and play. You saw it, that thing where he puts his face in the snow and pretends to be a snowplow, just runs around in circles. That's what he's been doing. Hey, baby, so much snow. So much snow. I know it doesn't look that deep. They're saying that this is like seven or eight inches. It doesn't really seem like it, although I guess it is up to the bottom of that step, just about, so I don't know. Good boy. Let me see that face. Look at all that snow. Very considerate. He cleans up most of the snow that he tracks in the house. Much appreciated, Turbo. Do your stretches. Do your stretch. Uh-uh. Do your stretches. 
Good stretches, Turbo. Good boy. Good baby. He's so big. All right, so that was fun. Dogs have been out. Toby, he went out too. He just, he's kind of like the caboose. He always does everything last. Turbo was whining at me through the door. So I put another hook up here and I realized that I don't think I spaced that quite far enough out. I didn't screw it in all the way. I stopped. I think that I would want this more like over, probably right about where that seam is. It's because I want this next light that I'm setting up to light up more of the foreground, which is like everything right here. And where I have the hook, I think it's gonna be more like right here. So if that's the stud right there, I'm gonna bring that out to right around here. Is that what I said? I think. Yeah, that should do it. Looking straight down. I think that would get any plants I have sitting right there. I'm glad I didn't screw that in all the way because you know those are not easy to get back out once they're in. Because they're not very easy to get put in place. Anyways, now if you actually get into the stud, that's going a little bit too easy. Did I miss the stud? No, there it is. I was just still pushing through the drywall there. Do a little pull test. Make, see if the ceiling's gonna come falling down on me. That seems good. That should, that should hold on to a few light bulbs. I probably should have gotten back down and made sure that I liked where that was before going forward, but I didn't. And this is good. That should light up just the edge of the table to the plants that will be sitting right here in front of it. Okay. Done with the ladder stuff. Well, not really. I'm done with needing to take y'all up there. Switch back over to the camera that has the better audio. Got my grow lights here. These are going to go onto this adapter. That's going to hang from the ceiling. From a lamp fixture that's up there in the ceiling. These are the Sansai, Sansi, Sansai, I'm not sure. 36 watt full spectrum LEDs. Been using these for a few years and so far I've really, really liked the results from using them. I've only had one that I need to change out. Actually, I haven't changed it out yet, but I have one I need to replace. Otherwise, all the others have lasted a really long time. They've been pretty sturdy. They feel kind of cheap, but they're not. I, it's because they're plastic with lots and lots of holes in there. I'm used to metal on these LEDs with the heat sinks. That helps dissipate the heat, extends the life of the LED. But I haven't noticed these getting terribly hot, so I guess they, they, the people who make the light bulbs must know what they're doing. Definitely know more than I do about light bulbs, that's for sure. I trust them. Those are all unpacked. Gonna get these screwed in here to this adapter. The main thing I've noticed, though, about these adapters, these four bulb adapters, is that they're not very sturdy. These particular LEDs aren't quite as ridiculously heavy as some of the others, so they don't pull on these pieces as much. With the heavier ones that I've used in the past though, sometimes these little adapters, the four bulb adapters, aren't always long for this world because they tend to fall apart and not hold up very well. There it is. I just gotta <laughs> climb up to the ceiling, get this screwed in and plug in the light. There we go. One, two, three. I've wanted to put a new light up there for such a long, I should make sure these work. I already know that the other ones work. But I had to get them set up here onto the app. So hopefully, yeah, that's good. And then the new one, yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, that is so much better. So bright, so much more light over here. I don't have the plant over here that I intended. I have a hibiscus that I like to keep over here but it's still, it's back there. They're all hooked into those timers on that app I just showed you, really simple to do. I have them set to turn on at 8 a.m. and turn off at midnight. It's about 14 hours. That's been pretty good for the plants for the most part. Actually, I stepped it up a couple of hours. I had it at 12 hours and I decided to max it up to the 14. That's about as high as I like to go with grow lights, only because of, like the croton has flowers and things coming out of it. I have some quarter ones that are doing the same. I'm on stairs putting out some new growth. So they're, they're moving and growing. So they're going to want that extra energy. I have wanted this new light over here for such a long time. I actually talked about it last year and just, I couldn't do it because I didn't have enough electricity out here. But now with all the new stuff that got done with the heater and the new breakers and everything, I was able to squeeze in one more. Ampage wise, I could technically put another one right next to it, but I don't, I don't need to. I don't take the plants that far over. This should be ample. That should definitely do the trick and keep the plants happier. So they're more well lit now over here. It used to be right here towards the edge of the table, things were more shaded. Now that's better. And remember I had to remove a light from up here, actually two lights, I had a grow light up there and a filming light, which made things much more dark 
over here. So anything I have on the table is going to get more white. I don't really worry about that because I swap the plants around on the table an awful lot for the, you know, the background of the video. The camera does seem to be appreciating it though. I mentioned in, I think my last video and last weekend's video that until I get my lighting figured out for filming, cause I have to get some new lights since I had to remove the one that the camera really was having trouble focusing. I wanted to focus on everything back there with the grow lights, but it seems like it's, yeah. That seems a lot better. It's not just immediately focusing in on everything behind the plants. You can see the foreground is now brighter than the background. Nice. Two birds with one stone. I hate that saying. Those poor birds. Why are we stoning them? I'm still going to get a different light to put up there to help with removing shadows and nobody cares about that stuff. That's behind the scenes filming stuff. Right, so the hibiscus that goes here, this goes back to stuff I meant to talk about in the beginning of the video, but I was so excited about the snow and rushing around to get things done before the rain moved in that I just forgot. So I mentioned in last week's video that I wanted to wait until it was nice and warm out to do the repots because I'd rather do them outside because it was, I'd rather get the dirt on the ground out there than in here. And then that one nice day we had, I ended up spending pretty much the whole morning watering the outdoor plants because we hadn't had rain in such a long time. And it was, you know, it got up to 64 just a, a couple days ago, which is great timing for watering the outdoor plants. Everything that was in a pot, not the stuff in the ground, but that takes a long time. What are you doing with the watering can? Because all the water is shut off outside. We don't have the frost free pipes here. So just have to disconnect all the hoses. And uh, it, the original forecast when I was talking about doing the repots, they didn't, it was supposed to be warm for a couple of days and the rain wasn't supposed to move until that evening and said it moved in that morning. It just, it didn't work out. But that's okay because it looks like next week, like it's gonna be pretty cold here for about three, maybe four days. And then it's going to be like in the forties. I think there's a day in the fifties. So I can still get around to doing that. And then I mentioned when I was talking about doing those repots that the re another reason I wanted to wait was because I need to be able to scoot the big plants outside. Like I had the windmill palms out there earlier in the video. That was because I was hoping to have enough time to get around to moving some things out. So I'd have room to get into this area back here, which is now blocked off by plants that are normally outside that's been so cold that I've had them inside. Anyways, when it's nicer, next week I can push those bigger plants out, then get to the hibiscus that's, I don't, you're not going to be able to see it. That's where the hibiscus is. I want that hibiscus over here. It's always done better right here, and it's very pest prone. Whitefly and aphids love that plant, and any time I have a plant that's really pest prone, I want those to be within reach. We want all of our plants to be within reach, but there's some fatsias and Pindu palms, and there are a lot of plants back there that are just plants that hang out and chill, that don't need much care at all during the winter time. That's where those stay. The hibiscus, that's not one of those plants. You need to pull that out of there. There's also a heliconia back there and the tree fern, which I think might be dead. I don't know, we will see. The heater may have been just a few weeks too late for that one. So I will do all of that next week, hopefully. Just mean the forecast stays the same. You really, you never know what's going to happen here. Oh, it's so bright and shiny. Love that. And really, I'm looking forward to getting the hibiscus set over here. I think it's going to appreciate it. That's also why this begonia is still on the table over here and not back there, except able to get behind the table to put the begonia. Yeah. You get it. I got some rearranging to do. I don't really have the means to do it just at this time, but I got the lights done and taken care of, so that's fantastic. Still need to replace that one up there. Oh, speaking of which, those Sansai, Sansi LEDs are on sale right now. I don't know if they will be when the video comes up. They're like $25.99, which is good because I think I paid $44 for some of these and $36 for the others. So $25.99 or $49, whatever it is, that's a that's a good price. So I nab some of those up. I'm probably going to order a few because I need to replace that one. And I use them under my fish tanks for my refugiums for the plant filters. So I'm going to stock up on those while they're on sale. And these I meant to show the box. I don't know if I did. These are the Govee Smart Plugs two outlets. I also have the ones with the one outlets. They work really well. Haven't had any issues with them. The ones that I got that only have one outlet on them, for some reason I had a lot of trouble setting up. Talked about that in the last vlog. They just, I don't know, they wouldn't hook up and then went to bed, got up the next morning and they hooked up. I, I don't know what that was about because the Gobi products usually link up to the Bluetooth on the phone and then to the Wi-Fi very smoothly and quickly. I got that one all set up in like, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 seconds something like that. You plug it in and a light starts blinking and then you hit add on the phone, select the device and that's pretty much it. And then go through and set up your Wi-Fi and everything. And you push a button on there, but very, very, very simple. You cannot stand Bluetooth and Wi-Fi products where you have to go through like a big, long, ridiculous process getting them linked up. No, not a fan. The Govee stuff, 
fantastic as far as that's concerned. They really set up quite easily and quite nicely. I love that little pot. It's so cute. So cute. So happy. Okay. A couple more things to update and then probably going to wrap this up. I need to get that heater turned back on. First thing. I'm surprised by it. Look at what's going on back here with this heliconia. I did that video, the video prior to this one, potting these up and talk about how normally you don't expect anything to come out of the center stick on the rhizome. Those usually die off. But don't prove me wrong. That's one out of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six. So we'll call that an outlier. But it's exciting. Don't expect much to come of it, but still exciting. And see what's going on with the seeds since the start of the video, which was a couple of days ago. Got some tiny sprouts. Coming up from the tomatoes, which is nice. I was a little bit concerned because I expected those to come up faster than they did. But also, I mean, I, it was pretty chilly over here until I got that foam put in place. So that's made a big difference. But actually, it was within like 36 hours of forming that spot up that those started to sprout. And then in here, look at that, all kinds of progress. These were just barely sticking up above the soil a few days ago. And it looks like with the uh, red star, uh oh, fungus gnat. Get out of there. I'm gonna close it. Have a good look. Oregano's coming up back there. It looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna end up putting some sticky traps in there just to be safe. It looks like the majority of those red stars which said they had poor germination are all coming up. Green globes are coming up well and the oregano that wasn't really doing anything a few days ago, they're just barely sticking up. Isn't much to see, but come the next video, there, there should be on oh, the snowplow. I'm actually pretty shocked to have even seen a snowplow. Missouri Department of Transportation is very understaffed right now. They've been working around the clock. So that's, that's surprising. But it's supposed to snow for a few more hours, so I don't, I don't know how much good that will have done, but it looked like they were spraying something down. Maybe some salt or the liquid stuff. I don't know. It's neither here nor there. And then the windmill palm. All right, you can't see that. Look at those. I had no idea that these would pop out this quickly. Nobody told me. Why didn't y'all tell me? I would have set up a GoPro and done a time lapse. I'm used to a lot of my other palms where they start to put out their inflorescence and like the, uh, what is it, the Alexander palm? Man, that thing, it starts to flower and it, it takes its sweet time, which is probably smart pollination wise. Look at that one. Dangling out there in the wind, just having the time of its life. So fun. I have a feeling these are going to be very messy. I'm going to give them a few more days, see what they do and before I try and sex the plant, see if it's a male or a female. Real fun to look at. Wish I had some others in flower right now so I could get some seed, but hey, that's all right. That, that's all right. Maybe another time I'll have more in bloom at one time. I'm just happy to have the one. I'm very excited about that. I've had that plant since it was just a tiny little baby. All right, thanks for hanging out. I'm gonna go outside, play in the snow with the dogs. There's so much of it. I don't know how much there's going to end up being. The numbers are all over the place. The backyard, it didn't look that deep when Turbo was running around in it, but then I opened my front door a little while ago and noticed that the level of snow was up to the, to the step that comes into the house, and that step is on a porch, which is above the ground. And I think those are six inch steps, so it's just like a solid blanket of snow going all the way out to the street. There aren't any steps anymore. So the house and the trees is maybe cutting back on how much is accumulating in the backyard, because there's definitely more in the front, maybe eight to 10, 12, I don't know. But it's fun, not good snowman snow. I tried, it's very dry, it just falls apart. All right, gotta get that heater turned back on. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything just going beautifully for you. That's not the most beautiful plant. It will be, it's gonna get much happier now that it has more light and more warmth. Comment down below, say hi. I know that this snowstorm is gonna be affecting a lot of people. We got lucky so far, there was a lot of ice, but Power outages seem to be minimal. Hopefully it stays that way though. It's like I said, there's still several hours of this coming down. And I'm loving it, it's so pretty. All right, as always, I'm a, a bird pooped on the leaf. I pulled down, what's supposed to be a beautiful shot. There are a couple of birds in here. I opened the door for them, they didn't want out, so I put some food out for them. They've been eating it and drinking out of the pond. And when it gets warmer, I'll leave the door open longer to see if they want out. Normally they leave like right over, there I go, did it again. I was saying goodbye. Keep on growing. Bye bye.